Hello everybody, my name is Ropius and welcome to a new episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. In this series, I compare events in a selected character's life within one of the Assassin's Creed games to the actual history the individual lived through. As always, beware of major story spoilers. For today's episode, we will be exploring the Renaissance man himself, Leonardo da Vinci. As is customary, I'll begin this episode by sharing with you his pre-game history, which will inform us on his background prior to AC2 and ACB, then his in-game history, which we see depicted in the game, and lastly we will analyze the differences between what happens in the game to the real historical events of the man's life. Starting with the pre-game history, Leonardo was born on April 15th, 1452 in the town of Vinci, located in Tuscany, Italy. His father was Messer Piero Frosini di Antonio da Vinci, and his mother was a peasant woman simply known as Caterina da Vinci. Not much is known of his early childhood other than the fact that he spent the first five years of his life living with his mother in the town of Anciano until 1457 when he moved in with his father in Vinci. Since Leonardo was his father's illegitimate child, Piero married multiple women until he was finally able to produce some legitimate heirs. Although he was not officially recognized through his father's family, he still received an informal education on most of the relevant topics of the time, such as mathematics and Latin. It is unknown exactly when Leonardo began with his interest in art, but he evidently showed some talent for it at an early age. In 1466, when he was 14 years old, Leonardo was accepted as the apprentice of the artist Andrea di Cioni, better known as Verrocchio, in the city of Florence. Aside from learning the basic artwork, such as painting, sculpting, drawing, and modeling, Leonardo was also taught in various fields which included metallurgy, carpentry, chemistry, mechanics, and others. As many apprentices of the period did, Leonardo was tasked with working on his mentor's artwork in different ways. In this manner, he improved his abilities considerably under the tutelage of Verrocchio, while many historians believe that he contributed heavily to the painting of the Baptism of Christ, among other masterpieces. After six years as an apprentice, Leonardo da Vinci was officially recognized as a master in the Guild of St. Luke, which qualified all artists and doctors of medicine. With help from his father's funds, he was able to establish his own workshop in Florence. However, he and his former mentor Verrocchio would still collaborate on certain artworks. In 1476, Leonardo and other men were charged with the crime of sodomy. However, he was acquitted. It was later in this year where we first met Leonardo in Assassin's Creed when Ezio's mother sent him to purchase some of Leonardo's artwork as he was a newfound artist that she truly admired. Historically speaking, little is known about da Vinci's work in the following two years as he was establishing his professional career. This made it the ideal timeline for Assassin's Creed to utilize him as Ezio's confidant and engineer who would fix his weapons and follow the schematics offered in the codex while Ezio hunted his enemies. However, in 1478, Leonardo received his first career launching commission, which was to paint an altarpiece for the chapel of St. Bernard in the Palazzo Vecchio. This eventually led to a second, more memorable commission, which had him paint the Adoration of the Magi in 1481 for the monks of San Donato a Scopetto. Unfortunately, as became a theme in his career, Leonardo did not complete either of these commissions, the second due to the fact that he traveled to Milan. The reason for this voyage was that Lorenzo de' Medici, the de facto ruler of Florence, had Leonardo create a silver lyre in the shape of a horse's head in 1482, which he was sent to Milan to deliver as a peace offering to its ruler, Ludovico Sforza. Arriving in Milan and gaining favor with the Sforza, Leonardo remained in the city from 1482 until 1499. During these years, Leonardo was commissioned to paint many pieces which included most famously The Virgin of the Rocks, The Last Supper, and A Holy Family. Aside from simply painting, Leonardo also informed Ludovico on his abilities and therefore he was given the task of designing some of the architecture for the Milanese Cathedral while also undertaking various engineering projects. It is estimated by historians that it was around 1485 that da Vinci drew up the plans for his flying machine. However, there is no historical record of him attempting to build it as was shown in Assassin's Creed when Ezio saw pieces of it in his carriage and his workshop. Back in the real history, the reason for Leonardo's departure from Milan in 1499, after a very successful boost to his career, was the starting of the Second Italian War, when the French began invading Italy and captured the city of Milan. Deciding it was best to move on, Leonardo, among many others, fled to the city of Venice. This was similarly represented in Assassin's Creed II, however they show Leonardo traveling to Venice before the beginning of the Second Italian War. Historically, while in Venice, da Vinci was commissioned in multiple different positions, such as artist, engineer, and military architect. He is known to have created plans to aid in defending the city against naval assaults, which were always a concern for the extremely naval-based Venice. 
Evidently, there was no record of him aiding Ezio with the development of an early pistol or playing any role in the following conspiracy against the Doge, as was represented in Assassin's Creed 2. In addition, his flying machine was never used by anybody to infiltrate the Doge's palace. However, it made for a very impressive scene in the game, especially when he finally discovered how to make it fly. I can't believe it! It worked! It really worked! You flew, Ezio! You flew! See, but not very far. Well, what were you expecting? The machine wasn't designed for distance. All right, look, let me go over my plans here. Maybe I can find some way to extend the duration of the flight. Instead, following more reasonable success in 1502, Leonardo moved once again, but this time he was officially hired by Cesare Borgia, the son of Rodrigo Borgia, or as he was known at the time, Pope Alexander VI. As opposed to staying in a single city, Leonardo followed Cesare's army and acted as his military architect and engineer as Borgia traveled through Italy. Since maps were a rare commodity at the time, Leonardo was a valuable resource to Cesare since he was able to create extremely accurate maps of the cities which would aid him in his military planning. This segment was well represented in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, however the timeline was slightly switched around as Leonardo entered his service earlier in the game and was made to create his planned war machines, which wasn't actually the case. This patronage seemed to have ended around the time that the Pope died and Cesare lost his position of power. In late 1503, Leonardo returned to Florence and rejoined the Guild of St. Luke as an artist. He was once again commissioned to create a few different paintings during a period of two years and played a role in relocating the Statue of David. It is also assumed that during this period of time he painted La Gioconda, better known as the Mona Lisa. However, in 1506 he decided to return to Milan for more work. Unfortunately, his father died in 1504, and therefore, by 1507 he was back in Florence trying to work out problems with his brothers concerning his father's estate. By 1508, he was back in Milan, living alone in a small parish. In 1513, at the age of 61, Leonardo began working for Pope Leo X in the Vatican in Rome until 1516. While working for the papacy, he operated in the same time frame as both Michelangelo and Raphael. Following the 1515 invasion of Italy by the French, led by Francis I, who captured Milan, Leonardo was present during the 1516 meeting of the Pope and the King of France. Leonardo was subsequently commissioned to make for Francis a mechanical lion that could both walk forward and open its chest to reveal a cluster of lilies. This led to him entering the service of Francis in 1516, where he was given the Chateau du Clos de Lucie in Amboise, France. Leonardo worked for the King of France on his new property for three years until he died on May 2nd, 1519, having become close friends with the King himself. Throughout his life, Leonardo proved himself to be the ideal Renaissance Renaissance man and a polymath, being employed as a painter, sculptor, architect, mathematician, engineer, musician, inventor, anatomist, geologist, botanist, writer, and cartographer. He was also very respected in the fields of civil engineering, geometry, hydrodynamics, mechanical engineering, pyrotechnics, zoology, anatomy, chemistry, astronomy, military development, and military architecture, among others. In summary, there were a few differences between Leonardo's actual life and his representation in AC2 and AC Brotherhood. First, although Assassin's Creed's depiction of him being an artist for hire in 1476 was accurate, there is evidently no record of him aiding anybody developed advanced weapons, such as the Hidden Blade, at this point in his life. Secondly, Assassin's Creed 2 showed him leaving his service in Milan much earlier than he did in real life, in addition to implying that he had begun to construct his flying machine. Thirdly, while in Venice, at no point did Leonardo complete his flying machine, nor did it evidently play a role in attempting to stop the assassination of the Doge. Fourthly, and I suppose this should go without saying, but Leonardo never worked with any codex pages from the Hashashin, nor did he aid them in locating a piece of Eden or the vault. Fifthly, although Assassin's Creed Brotherhood demonstrated that he was forced into the service of Cesare, it appears that historically he offered his services to the Captain General and, as was stated earlier, he never built him any of his sketched war machines. Although, as I said before, those missions truly added an incredible element to the story for anyone who is familiar with Da Vinci's military sketches. Lastly, the entire Assassin's Creed Brotherhood DLC involving Leonardo being kidnapped by a cult to solve ancient puzzles never happened. Overall, the majority of these differences are based either in his unfinished work, which Assassin's Creed used to build up missions around his projects, and the lack of records concerning his life between certain years. This truly allowed the writers of the game a little creative license with his history. However, I must say that besides these minor changes, his life was brilliantly represented and offered an incredible record of his lifetime and achievements during the Renaissance, which also showcased his curious and inventive personality. And with that fact, we have finished another episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, I highly recommend you try out one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future characters from any of the Assassin's Creed games that you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in a future historical episode.